Okay, we are live. Okay, so we're going to, we, we should be live on Facebook, everyone. So we're going to uh, give it a few minutes and let everyone find me. Okay, I see it on Facebook. So, okay, so we're good. You may have to refresh on there. Hey, Janet. Hello there. Hey, Mr. Den. Good to be with you guys, too. Hey, Miss Robin. I just talked to her. Okay, so we're going to give it a few minutes and let uh, everybody find me. And I've got Jenny working in the background. So she's going to help me uh, relay questions that you might have. So type in the chat where you're from, and uh, she can announce if we have people from different countries. Who knows where they're going to be tuning in to or from. Hey, Miss Lucy, Ginger, Rosemary. Hey, Miss Kim. How are you this evening? Okay, so um, we did this Sunday, and we I think we've worked out the way we want to do it. So... Um, you won't be able to see Jenny. You won't be able to hear Jenny. If you can hear her, you need to put in the chat you can hear her because then we've done something wrong. So, hey, Cheryl from California. So I can see some of the chat, but it, you guys type so much that I may not be able to keep up with it. And I usually go back and I will answer any questions. Even though I've answered them on air, I still type them in 90% of the time just so that um, you have a confirmed what I said and you can find it. Okay. Hey, Kathy Appleby and Miss Brenda, Emily. So anyway, um, I am Paula McCoy, owner of Colors for Earth, and we are Tuesday Night Live. So every Tuesday night, the plans are one Tuesday we're going to do ceramics, one Tuesday the next one we'll do glass related. I'll throw in a brush related one every now and then. So every other week, I mean, every week it's something different, but we'll try to do every other week ceramic, every other week glass. So, because we have a lot of customers with both, okay? The brush information usually pertains to both. You can use the same, you know, strokes and everything. Or if you don't do fired products and you work with acrylics, then the brush ones uh, can help you with your brush strokes on canvas, wood, whatever. So, um Usually I will tell you ahead of time, I'll tell you on the weekend. I usually post either Friday night or Saturday what I will be doing the following Tuesday. And don't forget to um, click the little button that says reminder and that way it pops up in your feed to remind you Paula's going on in 10 minutes, 20 minutes. I don't remember what it says. I haven't looked lately. Uh, they keep changing that. So anyway, okay, so let me turn this off. Yes. Yeah. You don't. Okay. Jenny says she does not see me on YouTube. So I'm not sure why that is. Uh, open the destination in YouTube. I'm not sure. We'll just have to go with it. I can always put it up there. That's not a problem. So, okay. So if you have any questions or you have things that you would like to see or a technique, as long as it's not a paid tutorial, you can put those suggestions in the comments and um, I will write them down or Jenny can jot them down as we're going through and she'll relay those to me, okay? So um, be sure and, you know, tell me. There's Miss Lorraine from Sydney, Australia. Awesome. Hello there. I don't remember what time it is there. I think it's maybe six hours different. I can't remember. Anyway, okay, so tonight we're going to talk about jewelry. I could sit here and chit chat all day. You guys know that. Um, and once again, those that weren't on here Sunday, I want to thank everyone for their well wishes, phone calls, uh, emails, messages, cards. I mean, you guys have just been awesome as I've been going through this and you've been patient for me to come back. And I finally just had to tell myself, you got to do this. There's a lot of you out there. And so um, Jenny's going to be my conscious and kind of remind me of things. Even though you can't hear her, she can talk to me. Okay, so I'm going to switch to my overhead camera 
and it'll take me a second just to get um, that going. Okay, so you should, okay, you, Jenny said I sound good, so you should, should still be able to hear me, okay? So I did these things a couple of years ago, and uh, the other night I was showing you, Sunday night, I showed you how I used um, the Resist Gel, okay? So, and what did I do with my bottle? There we go. So this is the gel. We sell this product it's an etch-all product, just like the etching cream. And uh, I'm going to pop it up there on the screen so you can see it. And Jenny will put a link into the comments uh, so that you can tap on that and go straight over there if you want to put it in your cart while we're talking. So what I like to do is put it into my smaller piping bottles because the tip on this, unless you're doing large pieces, this is a fairly large opening, okay? So I like to put it in to the piping bottles where I have different size tips that I can vary my width of my line, okay? So the piping bottles also, and I'll pop it up there, give me one second. Um, oh, I have to hide it. <laughs> I'll figure, you know, you're gone for a while and you forget the controls. It's amazing. One second, I'm trying to get it, there we go. Okay, so this is the piping bottle it comes in a one ounce which is what i've got here and a half ounce you just choose that in your cart and it comes with all four of those tips so you can decide on what size tip okay we are did you put the link for youtube is that what you did jenny okay all right sorry guys i'm talking to her and talking to you at the same time so anyway those are the piping kits you can switch out and uh, do different sizes so what I did was put the gel in here and you just take the clear cap off and then with a half a turn, put your tip on there and then shake it down. Um, what I like to do is keep a damp paper towel. So I've got one here. I just need to get some water on it. Um, and then I keep my tip inside that. So that keeps that from clogging and keeps it nice and fresh as I'm working. Okay. So the other night, what I did was I showed you what I'm going to do is put a piece underneath it. Uh, about five years ago, we did um, a CFE camp and we did some jewelry uh, like this and some different patterns. So what I'll probably do is make a blog and put these patterns out there for you so that you can uh, have those to use. All right. So I'm going to just put one over this little Christmas tree that's here. I think you can see that. Okay. And then I'm just going to go over it. And I'm going to turn it sideways so that it's easier. You could put a piece of scotch tape underneath that to hold it in place if you wanted. But what you want to do is just make a nice thick line. And Jenny, I probably need to zoom in a bit, right? Just a little bit. There we go. Okay. Is there any questions so far or anything you need to tell me, Jenny? Okay. So all I'm doing is just following that line and depositing a large amount, because you want to be able to, whoops, man, now I get to show you how to fix that. You want to be able to get that to come off of there after it's dry and you've done your decorating, okay? So I messed up there, it had a little bubble. So what you want, don't want to do is stand it up, sit it down, either lay it down or keep it straight down as you're working, because it'll get that air pocket in there if you don't. And then all I'm going to do is take a Q-tip and I'm going to remove where it spit at me. Okay, so that should be good. So then that just needs, and I'll put this under there so you can see it a little better. Okay, so that just needs to dry. And when it dries, it becomes, it doesn't show very well. It's clear. I don't know if you, you can kind of see that on there. Okay. All right, so there's different patterns. Um, you can reduce them, do whatever with them. Okay, so I think you can see that one. It kind of has a shimmer to it, but what it is is the green gel dries clear, okay? And it's kind of tacky. It's like rubber almost when it's dry, and that's what you're looking for, okay? So earlier today, a couple hours ago, I set and I filled this one in. So I flooded in and did a two-color blend. 
and then I'm going to show you how to do the center and I'm going to show you how to do some shading and then peel that off. But first I want to do um, is show you how to decorate. So depending on what your colored background is will determine what colors you use. OK, and I'm using the regular enamels and I'm going to do this one first, this one. And the nice thing is if you have a piece of dichro with a flaw or something, you could always um, plan it out that your enamels would cover an area, which would be kind of cool. And that way you still use it because you think it may be uh, not usable. So this is uh, grape G339. Yes, ma'am, Jenny. If Linda, if you, yeah, if you're on a cell phone and you can turn your phone sideways and you can also take your finger and swipe to the right or left to get rid of comments, but on some, some different uh, computers and things, it shows closed captions. So I'll try to move things around to avoid against that. Okay. Hopefully that'll work. So this is what I'm, let me get it where you can see it. So this is similar to what I've got on the piece that I'm going to show you. So where you see the dichro showing through, you see how that glimmers? That's where the gel was. So you have to kind of think in reverse of what you want. So a good for instance is, well, you can see the black lines on here. So this had black glass and clear glass. I didn't use any dichro. Okay, this was black glass. And then where you see the black lines, that was the gel. And then all the color was put inside there. Okay, so if you wanted the big sun to show for your dichro or whatever glass you have behind it, then you would fill that area in completely, paint around it. And then when you peel it up, whatever's underneath it or whatever your background glass is, is what's going to show. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. And Kim says she likes the butterfly wing. Aren't those cool? Um, you can, okay, so the question is, can you use color concentrates or does it have to be enamels? If it's jewelry, you could use color concentrates. It is a matte finish. If you're using the concentrates, it's gonna be a matte finish and you could do a single layer. Um, but I would still, if you want it shiny, you're going to have to sift over it or you're going to have to cap it with clear. This was just two thin pieces of black glass. And then I did my uh, resist where you see the black and then I filled in my colors and then peeled it off. Okay. So this one here, same kind of thing. So where you see the dichro is where the gel was. So the gel was all here and then I flooded in and then let it dry. And when it's almost dry, then I peeled it off. And, and I'll go through how to do that because there's some different ways you can do that. So see that one's got like a red dichro behind it. Um, you can use tape um, and Jenny can put in, let me see if I can get it up here. So this tape is called rainbow tape, okay? And it, whoops, let me get it under the camera, sorry. Uh, with the smaller screen, it's hard to see. So it comes in three different sizes. It's uh, also called crepe, crepe paper tape, I think is how they referred to it. I found it at a teacher's tools many, many years ago. I use it in my raku, um, but I found that it was fun to put on the jewelry also. Um, Glazer Ceramics has it and uh, Jenny has put a link in for it on the chat there so you can find it, okay? So it has low tack, I wouldn't leave it on there for days, uh, but it's easy and it's fun to be able to do the different uh, sizes. Okay. All right. So I'm going to get rid of that. So that's fun to do. All right. So what I did and I'll just, okay. So I showed you how to do the gel part. So here's one that I put the rainbow tape on. Okay. So I've just taken the clear glass and added the tape. So let's do another one of those so you can see, and that gives everything time to dry. Let me move these up. And I've got other things that don't use the gel, but I wanted to show you some of the different um, 
jewelry pieces. Okay, so just take the tape and you can even uh, curve this because if it's small enough, you can take and wave it, okay? And that basically creates a resist in that area and then you would paint in the other areas, okay? That's how you do that. And that's what I've done on this one, on this one. I was just playing with some different techniques. So I put the tape downwards. These are just two pieces of black. Okay, so put the tape down. I flooded, I did some blending of colors and then I added some glitz on it. And then I pulled my tape off, okay? This is a really cool one. Hopefully you can see it. I think you can see it there. So I filled in like the whole petal with the resist. Okay, so it would be all of this area, all of this, all the center and it allows you to have the whole flower show as dichro. We just added the background color in it. So that's another way you can do it. And what I'll do is I'll put some uh, snapshots of these on my page so that you can see those, okay, later. All right, so let's do an enamel one to start with, and we're gonna do this guy. So the question on CCs or enamels, uh, it depends on whether you want it shiny. This is uh, Orchid Bloom 338, and I'm using Grape 339. Okay, so I'm just going to do a two color blend, and I'm going to take it off that dichro so that you can see it better. And Jenny, let me know if I'm off camera or anything. Okay, so I always tend to start with my lightest color, and I've mixed my enamel up with the glass medium, the dry enamel with the glass medium, GM 300 to the proper consistency. And there's other videos out there to show you all of that. Um, so I'm not gonna go over that right now. So I'm gonna flood that color on and I like to put the light on the outside of the petal. And I'm not worried, I've got a line going up the center of that petal, but I'm not worried about it because it'll uh, pull off with the resist. And then I'm gonna grab a little bit of the dark and I'm gonna add it down here. Any questions, Jenny? Okay. All right. So, and then once you get through two colors on side by side, you can pull lines back and forth to blend. You can also pull one direction and then wipe on a paper towel and you can grab and pull the other direction, wipe that off. Cause whatever you're pulling into, that's going to be on the tip of your brush. So you need to remove it or you just move it around instead of removing it. Okay. So just back and forth and then I can go back in and I'd like to tend to skip every other petal, even though I've got the gel on there as a dam. I still like to skip that way. They don't merge into each other. So about halfway, I'm just wiping off the excess in my jar so that I don't waste my product. And then fill that in and then we'll blend. So if you're just joining us, we're using the Colors for Earth enamels on fused glass. And I've made a design with um, Etch-All Resist Gel. I'll set that there. And all of these things are available on our website. And be sure and comment, say where you're from. We will be drawing for prizes at the end. Okay, now this one is separated away from that one. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it. And so all you're doing is using the gel as a resist, okay? Or the tape. You're masking it off to protect an area so that when you remove it, you're seeing what's underneath it. It could be a piece of colored glass. It could be the dichro that I've shown you on some of them. So you could use a lot of your scraps. It's a good way to get rid of, you know, some of those. You can even, uh, if you've got a cabochon you didn't like, uh, Jenny and I were just talking about some things that you could maybe do this over the top of it and save a piece that you didn't like. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. And Jenny, you just tell me if you have any comments or questions. Okay, she says we're good. It's gonna be hard for me to get used to that you can't hear, hear her say what she's saying to me. So that, that'll be a learning curve for me. 
but I think it'll work out. Okay. All right. So how many do we have on Jenny? 47. Hey, that's not bad since I've been gone for a while. So next week I will do um, ceramic. And if I uh, have a particular pattern or something, I will post that ahead of time so that you can print it out if you want to paint along with me. Okay. All right. So if you need to go, if maybe you got too much of one color, you can go back and add the light color and pull that in and maybe pull it in. So there's different ways you can blend. And there was an area there that looked like it It's probably where the, the resist is, but I'm going to add more color just in case. All right. Question? Nope. Okay. All right. So you can do the same with um, the taped version. So we'll set this aside to dry for a minute. So if you wanted, let's pick a different color. I've got some blues here. I've got 344 powder blue, and then I've got 351 cerulean. And maybe you just wanted stripes. You didn't want to, you don't have the resist, and this is another way. You can also take painter's tape and cut it with those um, decorative scissors, you know, that like pinking shears type things. You could do that and create your own pattern. So there's uh, different ways you can do it. So I'm just going to flood on some of the powder on one end, and I'm also going to put it on the other end. And then I'm going to put the dark. So I'm going to wipe off my excess and then add the dark in the middle. And you see I'm, I've got quite a bit of a little bubble there on the end of my brush. So I'm flooding the color on. You cannot flood the color on with the color concentrates. Okay, so now I'm going to blend up into that area and up into this area. So you can create your own um, custom glass. You could do this on a larger sheet, cut, fire it, cut it up, go to a minimum of 1380 and uh, come back and use it as a part sheet or cut it up into jewelry pieces. I mean, there's all kinds of things you can do. It's your imagination is your limitation. Okay. Robin wants to know how long it takes to dry. So this one, it, I mean, you could dry it with a fan. Okay. Um, this one's been, if you look on the back of this one, it still looks a little damp and this has been probably 45 minutes ago, but it's dry enough on the surface. That I could do more. So I would say 20 to 30 minutes. It really depends on how large of an area, Robin, that you're working, uh, will make a difference on how long it takes to dry. But that's a, a good rule of thumb. So what I thought I would, the reason I skipped is because I'm going to reverse it on the other stripes. So if the color is you're flooding it on, and if you're brushing like that, that's a no-no because it's going to be thin just like that. Okay. So you need to make sure that you get a nice flooding coat and if you're putting it on and the color doesn't like flow back together, if it stays open or you see an area that doesn't close, close up, then it's uh, not heavy. And it's not thin enough. It's too thick. Okay. So if it doesn't close up or merge together, then it's probably too thick. And like I said, I've got several videos on the mixing. So be sure and check those out. If you're new, uh, go to the YouTube search for Paula McCoy and then you'll see the Colors for Earth logo and then make sure you subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Did you go back and check uh, YouTube again, Jenny, just out of curiosity? It's supposed to be this. Yeah, it shows. Yeah, crazy, huh? It may not show up till afterwards, but um, I know before it did show up. So I was asking her if it was showing up on YouTube. 
it's supposed to be broadcasting to both just in case the, I have some people that um, don't want to do Facebook and so it makes sure that it goes out there and they can get it on YouTube. If it doesn't, I will sure I will post it out there later so that it's easier for you to find because I know sometimes going through Facebook, there's so much, and especially on my page, it's hard to find something. Okay. Any other questions or did anybody make any suggestions what they'd like to see in two weeks? Okay. Okay, so the question is, when will I take the tape off or the resist? Okay, so it has to be dry enough that it's not going to merge over into the other area. Okay, that's the first caution. And then um, what I'm going to do on this one here, I'm going to let that one dry. And I'm going to show you in a second. I need to put some yellow in the center of this guy real quick for the center area. And what happens is if you have let it dry and say you forgot to take off your resist or you had forgot to take off your tape, okay, I'm going to go ahead and put yellow on the center of this one too while I've got it out. Um, you would mist it, and I'm going to show you how to do that, with a fine mister and water and stay far back. You just want to do it just enough to loosen it so that it doesn't crumble too bad and then you will want to turn the piece upside down so that any flakes fall down and we're going to have a paper towel underneath us to do that okay so i want to show you this one is the one that i did a few minutes ago and i think you can see that this side is like clear and then that side still looks milky okay so the on my left, so it should be over here, this side is dry, but this side is still wet. Okay, and that's been, what, 10 minutes maybe? So that's a, a one way to tell. Okay. All right, so while this is drying for a second, um, and I could put a fan on it, but I don't want to have that sound. Um, here's another one that I did, like, marbleizing on a piece, and then I took another piece and use the resist, okay, to make my spots. And then I flooded in silver sparkle around it. And then when it was almost completely dry, it just has to be dry enough that when you turn it over to peel everything off, it's not going to run off of your glass, okay? So you don't want it bone dry, but you don't want it wet as a water puddle. And so what that did was open up, because these are two pieces of clear, and it opened that up to allow to see the marbleizing effect that I had underneath. I used uh, cerulean, deep cerulean. I used grape and silver sparkle in that one. Um, yes. Um, Laura, I would not. Laura asked, can you use a heat gun? I would not. But I'm going to show you a handy little thing that uh, Robin and I and some of the other acrylic people use. This is called Ranger Heat It Craft Tool. Um, it is, it's like a hair dryer, but it, I want to turn it on and show you. You don't, you can't hardly, you can't hear it. And it's not like it puts out a whole lot of heat, but I could kind of start drying this. I wouldn't put a heat gun on it, okay? But do you hear that? I'll put it over here by the mic. It's really low as far as the noise factor. Uh, so we use that when we're trying to dry some of the acrylic stuff that we do. So do not use a heat gun. You could just use a fan, okay? And the fan will dry it. You just got to worry about the fan pushing your enamel. If you're too close to it, it could push it and cause it to flood over into one section and get heavier in that area. Does that make sense, hopefully? Um, any more questions? No? I would not use a heat gun. This is just kind of like a hair dryer, okay? You are muted. I'm not muted, right, Laura? I'm, you don't hear Jenny talking. I'm having to relay what Jenny's telling me that you're asking because I can't read all the comments because it goes too fast for me, okay? 
yeah, no heat gun. Oh no, and now my company phone is ringing. Okay, hold on one second. I'm gonna put that over. Okay, so on this one, I just used a colored piece of glass. I didn't do any of the uh, resist on it. I just did a marbleizing, and then I kind of swirled in and kind of shimmied in some of the uh, glitz on top of it. So if I wanted on top of this one that's wet here, the striped one, I've got here some silver glitz. The glitz is a pre-mixed sparkly type product. Make sure you shake and stir it well. And I shook this up earlier, but I'm just going to double check it because it does settle. Now watch what happens. This is kind of a fun thing to do. And Jenny, you might even like this. So if you just tap that down, it basically will kind of diffuse into the color. You can also pull it along. And this will add like a silver sparkly look when it's fired and dry. Um, this is by Ranger, so I think it's on, uh, Robin confirm with me, Sandin McTeary Designs has them, um, and then uh, Ranger Ink, I think is what it is. If you just do it, actually, I think Walmart even had them, uh, just do a search on the name and you'll be able to find them. They're, I think they're $24.95, but they're a really nice, small um, when you don't have a lot of space, you can see it's like a mini hair dryer, but it's just called a Ranger heated craft tool. If you just do a search on that, you should be able to find that. Google it and you can probably. Uh... Okay, she put a Walmart link. Um, I'm sure Amazon sells them too. find the best price. Somebody may have them, uh, you know, support your local artist. I know Sandy McTeary that does acrylics uh, carries them on her site, I believe. I don't remember where I got mine, honestly. Okay, so this one here, this can be done a couple of ways. You can either put down your resist for the areas that you don't want color to be on, or one of these, and I don't remember, I think it was this one in particular, um, I took and I had a whole bunch of different scraps of black. So I flooded on all my different sparkles. I fused it to 1380, just a single piece, and I came back and I cut pieces up. And this is like a Tanya Viet technique where she stacks. Okay, I'm getting fuzzy. She said, I got to quit moving my hands fast. So you basically color your black glass, fuse it, just set it at 1380, and then come back and cut pieces. And you can lay pieces on top of each other. And then what Tanya does is fire them upside down and it pushes everything level. So you don't see a lot of buildup on that. And then I came back with um, a Dremel tool and just basically eroded those areas, etched them out with a Dremel tool. Okay, so that's another way you can do things. Um, like I said, these were just tape. This was the resist on the butterfly. And you can see this one here. I taped off where it's black, but then I came back and put more glitz inside there. I got to remember not to move my hands fast. Sorry. <laughs> the camera gets blurry when you start moving fast. Okay. Um, here's another one where I took um, lime, uh, key lime 360 and I had 351 and 352 and just did blending with those, added some gold sparkle on top for some shimmer. And the black line was the rainbow tape. You can also, can you see how those are kind of diffused? That's what I just did on the blue one. I just added some of that silver sparkle and it just melts into the glass basically. Okay, sorry, I need to hold my hand still. It got blurry. Okay, so there's that one. All right, so this is still a little wet. So when I say wet, I think you can see, can you see how it looks water, like a wet puddle? You can see it at that angle. Okay, so that's still too wet to remove the tape. Okay, so you would want to wait till it dries a little bit more. Now, this one is dry. Now, what I thought I would do is 
Mm, I think I'll take the resist off and then I'll show you how you can shade on top. Okay. So let me move this stuff out of the way. Oh, stuck to the tape. All right. I'm going to turn this over. All right. So I'm going to get it started. Let me set it down so you can see it. And I've just got a little pointed tool. You could use um, a toothpick to basically, oh, I wanted to show you how to mist it. I'm sorry. I forgot. Okay. So this one has been dry. I've got just a fine mist bottle, not the ones that pump those spit drops. It needs to be the fine mister. This is like what you see in the travel kits at Walmart. And I'm going to try to do this up here where it doesn't get on the rest of my stuff. And I'm just going to stay about six inches back. You see how it changed the color. Now I'm going to let that set for just a minute and then I'll show you how to take it off. I'm going to blot where there's no color so that it doesn't run. So what you've done is just dampen it enough. Did you have a question, Jenny? Okay. All right. So what that does is loosen up the enamel a little bit. So what you need to do is get that started. Can you see how I've lifted that up? Okay. I think you can see that. Okay. Now I'm going to turn this over. And Jenny, you tell me if I go off camera. Um, should I do the side camera to show them from the side? I don't know. Okay. Let's try this. Okay. Well, I stuck it on there. Let me, um, and now I'm going to have to try to do it. <laughs> yeah. I'll try to do it left-handed. So you can kind of see it. No, nope, that's not going to work. Is it? Where are we at there? So you can see how that, see it hanging down there. Now you should be able to see it there. Okay. So what you do is just keep pulling all that off. And the reason you want to have it hanging down is because any dry particles, you don't want that to fall into your wet color. Okay. Now I'm going to turn it over because it's hard to, I'm going to hide that camera. Um, it's hard for me to be able to tell what I'm doing without making a total mess, right? And I'll show you in two seconds. See how it's starting to show? So I just keep going underneath that, get a hold of it. And sorry, it's upside down, guys. It's no way around that one. Sorry about that. Okay. All right. So now you can see how it left. Let's put this under it and get rid of the, there was a little piece out there. So if you have something that got outside your, you can just scratch it off. You can take a damp brush. You just want to make sure um, that you get it all off of there. Okay. Now there's a couple of areas where it looks, and I don't know if I can get it to show on the camera or not. You can kind of see where it's um, dry particles on the very edge. You can take your damp brush and just blot that down if it bothers you. It's going to soften when it fires. It's not a big deal. Okay. But see how easy that was? And a lot of the stuff that is on that edge is just because it was sitting on top of the resist. That's it. So if you were doing production and you went, did all of your outlines and then you time you got done with a dozen of them, you should be able to go back and start painting depending on how detailed you get. Okay. But don't forget you can do the tape or that. And like I said, I will put, you can shade on top of this and I'll put these patterns out there for you. Um, I'm going to grab just a dot of CC 152 color concentrate. Remember the concentrates come from our ceramic side of the business. So they're a matte finish. And what I'm doing is I've got the mini Sumi brush and I put water in it, drug it off to get to a point to remove the excess. And I'm just grabbing a tiny, tiny bit and I can come in here and I can tuck that in and add additional shading next to the center and it'll just bleed back. Don't stay in that area very long because it's going to loosen the enamel 
and it's going to start picking it up. So I'm just barely touching it, sit it down, and move on. Don't putz around with it because you're going to loosen that up. But that's another one. Yes. Correct, Debbie. Ask if it, the resist comes off like dried glue. So yes. Um, so if you have another product that you have used in a resist way, you could just do it the same technique with it. I'm just telling you what I use because that's what we have, you know, on the website. But I know there's others out there. Um, I haven't tried it with like Elmer's glue. I suppose it, my brush is way too wet. I guess it would work. Okay. So you can see that you can make it and you can get as fancy as you want. Um, yes. Another question. The yellow, oh, sorry, is G322 lemon peel. The question was what the yellow color was. Um, and the glitz that I used is the silver, the 604, or pearl, we call it, sorry. Um, it looks like silver when it's fired, and it works really great over dark colors. So this would be equivalent to it. And when the glitz is fired, um, there is a burn off, we call it. So when you wipe your finger across it, you do have a little bit of residue, but it's just whatever the glass didn't absorb. It takes what it needs and then the rest just sits on the surface. Yes. Did you have another question? Okay. Okay. So we've been 40. I said I was going to keep this nice and short. Um, you know, here's that one. You can see. Same. So it just depends on what. Let's see if we can get this tape off. I'm going to turn it upside down and get my little disposable so I can show you this. I think I can get it off of there without making a mess. Okay. Move just a hair, but I think I got it off of there in time. So you can see if you put this over a dark. So if you're not fancy and you just want something plain, the, you know, and that may work better for people doing shows because maybe somebody doesn't like a flower, but they kind of like that technique. Um, I'm a fruit and flower girl, so I like like those. Um, so on this guy here that I did earlier with the resist, I would flood in like a, a green in the background and then the tree would show up as that dichro color. Yes, Jenny, was there another question? Okay. All right. Any questions on what I've done here, guys? This is your time to ask. Thank you, Miss Lucy. <laughs> I, I enjoy sharing and uh, experimenting. Uh, my mind, I, uh, it's hard to shut off because there's so many things and then I can't make up my mind what I want to do. You know, it's, it's hard. So this one is going to be on, this is kind of like a uh, lavender, but it's a clear Lavender yellow type color. That's pretty cool. So this needs to dry more before I can take it off. Okay, but I will take some pictures of these uh, when I finish them and post them. Uh, make sure you've commented because Jenny is going to spin uh, the comments and get some winners for tonight. If she's ready. Are you ready to do that, Missy? Okay, let me tell you about this one real quick. This is marbleized on one piece and I used like all those uh, anybody that's doing glass there's different templates and things out there and so I just use a sharpie and go around it on my glass and then cut it out okay whether you're doing it by hand or with the saw so these were just two sizes of the same shape this one was on black glass this was on clear and I just set them on top of each other so you've got a dimensional piece and it's pretty cool so all right Okay, so the first uh, giveaway is uh, this Dragonfly Glass Bowls. This is a uh, pattern pack that tells you how to do everything step by step. Retails at $24.95, and Jenny will spin and tell us who wins that. If you have it already, let me know, okay? And we'll find another one for you. Judy Johnson, congratulations. Yay! 
Um, so, Talissa, you, you do need to remove it. Will the gel burn off? You know, it might, but whatever color is on top of that gel, it's going to fall off on your piece also. So I would remove it, um, and it's going to stink to high heaven would be the other reason, okay, that I would do it. All right. So the next one is the Color Concentrate Fuse Glass DVD, and that goes to, this has Laura Miller. Okay. So this has a videos, it has pattern packets, it has charts, everything is on there to pretty much everything you want to know about color concentrates. Okay, it's 90 plus minutes of video. All right, congratulations, Laura. Now you got to do some glass. <laughs> okay, um, Laura works at Paragon, by the way. That's where she's from. That's the Laura that we took class with, Jenny. <laughs> that was a, yeah, so this is a three-piece roller sponges that are great to do with your stamps uh, to roll over the stencils. Uh, that's what I used when I did the stencil pieces with the color concentrates. And who wins that one? All right, Kathy Appleby. She's one of my teachers out of Georgia. Awesome. Okay, so if I don't have your address, which Laura, Kathy, I know you're at a new address. Um, Everybody send me a private message, okay, with your address, email, phone number. That way I can give you tracking, and I'm going to switch my cameras, okay? So let me unmute myself. Yep, yep. <laughs> it takes me just a second to get all the controls. So, all right, congratulations, everyone, and I hope you find this useful. You can do it on larger pieces. I've done 12 by 12 plates and just outlined a design, flooded in my color. So maybe you're one of those that you say, oh, I can't outline anything, or maybe I don't want an outline. Um, this is a way to do that, and you don't have to have a, no, a steady hand you know, to do it. Yes, we have one question. Oh, I just came up with, I've been doing the tape on my Raku for my ceramics, and a very elaborate, pieces where we paint different Raku glazes into different sections. So it kind of comes from that. Um, the resist, I, I we started carrying it. I had to figure out a use for it. So no, I, I believe I came up with it. Uh, it's been so long ago, I honestly don't remember, but I think I did. So I'll be honest with you. I mean, I'm sure there's other people that have done it. Uh, I mean, nobody's ever, you know, completely original, but I try, I try, so. I like to just give you um, different uses for the product that you maybe already have. So on that one, you saw I shaded with the color concentrates. So you can come back and do that. But do not try to flood your color concentrates on to do this. You need to use your enamels, okay? You can do brushwork with your concentrates, but don't, don't flood with them because they'll crack, peel, and it's not pretty, okay? All right, guys. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you for your help. And... Okay, and then um, let me know. Uh, send me messages of what you'd like to see next. I'll come up with something. I've got some new ideas in my head. It's just putting them down onto a piece and and making it work. I gotta get back in the rhythm of things. So it was great to see everybody out there just in name. So thank you for joining, and we'll see you next Tuesday night. And I'll let you know over the weekend uh, what the piece will be. Okay, ceramics next week. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. See you next time. Hold on. <laughs>